feel Cause I know that it's something real Gonna say how I feel Cause I know that it's something real Hey, hey Gonna say how I feel Cause I know that it's something real Sure, I understand it, but everything seems brighter now than before. Mm. I don't know why I feel this way, but every time I hear your name, all my worries disappear. Yeah, it's all because of. everybody how are you quite the crowd tonight we got julie and larry and deidre and gail and angie and donna and maria oh my goodness and uh and kale's here who else did i miss uh larry maria deidre <coughs> De yep helen's here goodness gracious everybody's awesome to have you guys here tonight thank you for coming Welcome to Story and Art, number like 176. Seriously? <clears throat> did you ever think, did you ever think it would get this crazy and this is, <laughs> and last this long? Oh my gosh. Do all the, oh, it's turning gray over here. Larry, I don't know about you, but we've had the craziest weather today. Uh, it has been absolutely nuts. Just crazy nuts. It'd be Blue sky, we could see the blue sky out over the bay, but in front of us, it was sideways rain. <laughs> and the neighbor's trees were blowing, and oh my gosh, crazy, crazy. And then it would be really nice. Uh, it's just been a kind of nutso day, but that's all right. Let's see, the sound level seem to be doing good. Yay! All right, so um, first off, I, Helen, I don't know if I can even get through the words to, to say how much that was. I, okay. I'm going to open this. I'm going to read it. Um, ooh, if I can find it, where am I? Go over here. Um, go to my inbox. Go to, uh, so Helen, that the, the Picture, I think, I think you might have illustrated a picture to go with it, but it didn't come through on an, an attachment. So, you guys, Helen wrote another story. I opened it just before Angie went live, so I didn't get a chance to put it into tonight's show. I'll pull it up tomorrow night. I'm going to put it on paper and show it. But I wanted to read it. It's called Amazing <laughs> by Helen Ohanadi. She said, and this is the story. Let me pull it over here where, oh, hey, don't go over there. Where I can actually have it in front of me and I can read it in front of me. There we go. Gretchen woke up with a smile on her face. I'm going to something amazing today. But what, she thought. Hmm, what can I do that's amazing? Gretchen decided to go outside and think on her swing. Going to and fro, she thought some more magic tricks, drawing, taking pictures, painting flowers, what? A few minutes later, her friend Angie came along. Hey, Gretchen, my love, what are you up to today? Inquired Angie. Hi, Angie, I'm trying to do something amazing. But I don't know what, replied Gretchen. I have just visions of little girls, little, little, little kids in this, uh, us all as little kids this is my, in my head when I see this. Well, why don't we get the gang together to figure it out? That's a great idea, Ange. So they got the gang together. Everyone was there, even the newer people. 
and she said, insert circle of gang here. In a circle, everyone started calling out ideas. Pick up trash, help old ladies across the street, kindness rocks, give goodie bags to homeless, and so many other ideas. But were they amazing? They discussed and agreed that these were great ideas, but not truly amazing. The gang said they would do some of the ideas in the future. Then Angie sprung up with her eyes shining bright. I know. What, what? They excitedly exclaimed. You've already done it, Gretchen, Angie replied. I did? Wondered Gretchen, what? Angie took a breath smiled and said, you brought us together and that is what's amazing. Not the end, but just the beginning of the story and art collection. That's amazing. Helen made me speechless. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. So that was in my email box this afternoon. Yesterday I got this amazing, or the day before, uh, a message from D. Again from Gail. I mean, you guys have to just give this old lady a break here. Man. Whew. Anyway, Helen, thank you. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful. And I love that this is the beginning of the story and art collection. <sighs> All right. Let's see what you guys got the Moscato too. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm grooving to the music. Yeah. Okay, catching up. Oh my gosh, you guys been chatting up a storm. I'm way behind. Janice is here. 104 degrees. Oh my God. What is my daughter thinking, moving to Phoenix in that hot of weather? What am I gonna do? Come visit. Ugh. All right, let's see. Let's see what everybody. <sighs> Look at this. Like a monsoon here in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, well, I grabbed the tissues. You might need them for later. Oh no, where are my tissues? Yes. I choose to move here. I chose to move here. <laughs> Julie E, you could probably trade houses with my daughter, <laughs> although she's moving to Phoenix, not Tucson. Oh, well, maybe, who knows? Uh, 18. Gail Fran. So you guys, uh, Helen, I mean, hair and braids. Yes, did you like uh, I, I call uh, Angie's look her Pippi look. Pippi long stockings. Reminds me of Pippi long stockings. Yeah. I, <laughs> okay, you made me. Aim, yeah. <laughs> I made Helen tear. Oh my gosh. It is it's so, such a beautiful story. Oh, my makeup. <laughs> that's okay. I just, there's, there's, I, that's why I have somebody glue eyelashes on me. Otherwise, I'd be. I don't know. Ah. Took me three minutes to write and five hours to type on my phone. <laughs> you know, you can just take a picture of it, Helen. Just take a picture of it with your phone and just send the picture. <laughs> As much either. And sometimes on some of those, you can actually take a picture of it and drop it into, I think, is it notes? And it'll transcribe it into, uh, into like, um, letter, words. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to figure out it. Maybe I'll show <sighs> Hi, all. Oh, hey, Sparkle. Nice to have you here. Uh, man. Anyway, so tonight is, you're, you're just going to might as well keep the tissues up because I have, um, um, I'll, I'll pull up tomorrow night. I'll have the story. I'm going to put it into the um, um, show tomorrow night with people's art and things. And I think Helen had a, an, an illustration she was going to send me that she did, but she was hoping that the tribe would uh, make, you know, some kind of illustrations of all of us sitting in a circle. I, I just have visions of it all as little kids. <laughs> You know, all, all different versions of us. Oh, not with my scribbles and scratches, she says. Uh, yeah, we. I'll get them. I will get it to everybody. Yeah, so um, it's still in my email. I can pull it together. Anyway, so tonight, the stories that I have... Um, one is called Have I Ever Told You? And one is called One Girl. The story One Girl is about the um, just one girl's differences in, in for education of girls all over the place. But the story Have I Ever Told You um, was written by Shawnee King, Shawnee M. King. And I'll take you over to see, let's see, right here. This is his screen share. Yeah, he, when you go to his page and you type in his name first, you get your choice to either kick, click on the part that says um, Shawnee M. King Lawyer or Shawnee M. King Children's Author. And it, um, he's a multiple award winning children's book author of Have I Ever Told You, which came out in 2019, and then Have I Ever Told You Black Lives Matter in 2021. Um, he is a children's right lawyer by training and teaches law at the University of Florida. When Shawnee is not teaching or writing, he can, can't get enough of his two children who are the inspiration for his books and his brilliant kind wife. In all of the spare time that Shawnee does not have, he runs marathons slowly and plays the drums badly, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Um, but the illustrator of this book, it was interesting. I looked up the illustrator and couldn't find anything about her directly. I, I found another person that was an architect from like Hungary that with the same name. It might have been the same person, but they didn't have anything on a web page about that. There is some stuff at the back of the book that I'll share with you when we get there. But for now, let's see. I cleaned up my um, whole scenes here, and there I am with the iPad. Ah, yes. Have I ever told you? There it is. So that's what I'm going to read first, is have I ever told you? It's, um, the illustrations, I think you're really going to, not only is the story just beautiful, um, but it has um, just the, the details and all over how it fills the page with the illustrations. It's just pretty, pretty fantastic. Okay. Nathan's running late. Okay. That's okay. I want a copy, please. Yeah, I'll get copies to everybody of that. I, I think uh, I'll check with Helen, make sure it's okay. Helen... Um, put in the chat if it's okay if I get copies because I think it's part of what um, she'd like the tribe to illustrate and I think that that would be a really cool thing. I resent the pick. Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me just check before I start on the story. Yeah. My email has not come up. Wow, but it'd be kind of a pick. Well, I'll see if it comes up in a little bit, but it hasn't come through yet. Um, all right, so this is Have I Ever Told You by Shawnee M. King. 
with illustrations by Anna Horbuth. Even this first um, little, this little illustration that has just the whole kind of, it's almost like it's the world and everything all kind of mixed together. But, and the whole way the illustrations have that whole, the earth there with everyone around and the connections and then the little finger puppets. I don't know about you guys, but I loved finger puppets and I used to make them with the like, students and all that. They're just so much fun. And the little cat down here in the corner and the race car, the ballet shoes, this funny little bird that is like half old TV and half bird that's standing on the thing on the thumb. And then the, the, the thumb puppet is an artist. We have an astronaut and a doctor and a fireman and a queen. Hmm. Have I ever told you that you can be whatever you want to be? Have I told you that you can be a president, a doctor, a lawyer, a professor, a firefighter, a police officer, a scientist, an astronaut, a dancer, an inventor, a musician, or an entrepreneur? Have I ever told you that? Salute, hello, hola, salut, hello, hi, oh, hello, hola, hi. Look at all the hands. Oh, I'm gonna do something here. It's showing it in it. There we go. Have I ever told you that people like you, who look like you, who talk like you, who speak Spanish, Arabic, English, Swahili, Mandarin, are ambassadors, Supreme Court justices, teachers, chefs, artists, filmmakers, senators, engineers, veterinarians, and writers? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that there is no one more special to me than you? That for me, you are the most special child in the world and that I love you now and will love you forever? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that you make me the happiest person in the world just by being you? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that I think about you all the time, even when I'm not with you? Have I ever told you that? <laughs> Have I told you that you make me laugh out loud? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that I love the stories you tell and the conversations we have and that I love to listen to you and talk with you? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that I love the way you get food on your forehead when you eat? <laughs> have I ever told you that? Have I told you that taking care of you and protecting you is the most important thing I do? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that if you hear a word that makes you uncomfortable, you can ask me what it means and we can talk about it? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that you should be kind to everyone and treat everyone with respect? That we all deserve respect because we are all people and that the people who you see have friends and families who love them just as I love you? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that you should stand up for people who need help or are being picked on? People of any color, people of any faith, people of any size or shape or ability. Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that you should always do the right thing 
even when the right thing is hard to do. Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that it's okay to disagree with someone, but you should listen to them with courtesy and respect? Have I ever told you that? Have I told you that you are courageous, hardworking, smart, funny, tough, humble, determined, patient, honest, compassionate, kind, curious, positive, thankful, hopeful, and wonderful? Have I ever told you that? Mm. Yes, I think I have. And it is true. I love you. Now, here's about the illustrator. Anna Horvath makes colorful and magical paintings full of surprising details, sinuous lines, and funny creatures. Her mission is to encourage children to use their imaginations and dare to see the world differently. Anna lives in Switzerland with her wonderful children and husband and can be visited at annabeesme.me. Oh, no wonder I couldn't. I looked up that. Um, a... N N A B I E S dot me. That didn't come up. Um, there she is. Let's go back to the screen share. Here's her website. Anna Bees and Woodsa. Woodsa. She says paintings from the quarantine. She has on her website um, all different kinds of stuff. Her home art that she has paintings. Oh, look at that. Look at this rabbit. And this down here. Oh my goodness. And her books. What else has she done? Have I ever told you? Those are the pictures there. Oh. Okay, um, about her right there. As she says, as the well-known quotation says, earth without art is just eh. <laughs> I love that quote. Earth without art is just eh. <laughs> How true it is, my original profession as written down in my diploma, is Master of Industrial Design Arts. Well, by today, luckily, I have more art and less industry in my life. That was the website I was finding, was her industrial art, um, industrial design. Uh, she, since her son was born, she turned towards art from industry and applied my knowledge to a very different way and enjoyed it and have lots of pr products and creations from different fields of art. You can find paintings and illustrations for your soul. I also make graphic design for your business, furniture, and all that kind of stuff. A few years ago, we decided to move from Hungary to Switzerland, where my husband was invited to work. Now we're living in this beautiful country where besides taking care of my beautiful kids, I had the chance to develop myself as an artist. Now that's my main profession. I'm working in full time as an independent art Artists, painting, illustrations, setting, stage set design, sculptures, small objects, costume designs, graphic design, art teaching, and so on. The possibilities are interest, endless. She has an art blog, too, which old necklace, refresh, st stage design. That's a, a cool. She has a cool um, art blog. That would be fun to see. Anyway, except those. Yeah, so that was the first book. Let's see what you guys are saying. Her art is fabulous. Yeah, so that was her website was, let me put it in here, uh, www, because I don't have it in the other thing. Dot Anna, B-I-E-S dot me. There's her, oops. Oh, I did it wrong. It's, uh, yeah, remove it. 
oop, removed from broadcast. It's supposed to be www.annabies.me is correct. I goofed. I put, I got, there it is. Yeah. I have this story before. I loved it again. Oh, you've heard it before? And, oh, good, Helen. I'm thinking I need to get it and send it with Layla and Lachlan when they move. Yeah. And I need to send it to McLean and Rook and Rory, too. That would be good. I think it's a good book. Every, every once in a while, there's a book that I think I need to get for them. Something new, something different. And that would be a good one. Anyway, the next book that I'm going to read, and I am going to read a second one. This one is called One Girl. And come on, go, 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 go. Talking to my iPad here. Um, this one is by Andrea Beattie. And um, I'll turn on to her screen share right here. There you go. So she has done this book, Erin Slater, Illustrator, I read for you guys, um, and all this. But this is the book that I'm reading tonight, and it's inspired by the global movement to empower girls through education. This lyrical story tells of one small girl who reads a book that lights a spark. Now, uh, she, awesome videos, questionnaires, activities, and books in space, my books more um, about me. Here she says, she was raised in Southern Illinois in a town so small I knew everybody and their pets, and they all knew me. I was one of six kids, and we spent our summer days traipsing through the fields and forests hunting for adventure. We often found it and sometimes it found us. Always it was fun and often we laughed so hard we blew orange crush or grape knee-high soda out our noses. <laughs> I still avoid grape knee-high. <laughs> I don't blame her. Uh, she was a big reader. She loved Nancy Drew and Trixie Big Belden mysteries and moved on to Agatha Christie books and then the classics. Don't tell anyone but my secret ambition is to star in a Broadway musical and I'm often tempted to break into song and dance at very odd moments. Most of the frozen food section of my grocery store, they have a good lighting. <laughs> she went to Southern Illinois University and studied biology and computer scientists. I find it so fascinating that so many of these people, you know, may have started out in sciences because that was what they were told and uh, or that. And then eventually it came down to writing or their, their, to their art, their creativity. Now this is um, art by Dow. Dow Fumaruk, and it's P-H-U-M-I-R-U-K. And she is fascinating. Um, <laughs> this is some of her artwork and she's the illustrator of the book, but about her, is a clinically retired pediatrician who found her passion in creating children's books. Through creative out, though creative throughout childhood, she put this artistic part of herself aside as she pursued a career in medicine. Years later, when she chose to take time off to be a stay-at-home mother in 2003, she rediscovered her love of all things creative, finding much joy, especially in children's book illustrations. She experimented with different mediums and styles on her own for a while, finally realizing she couldn't do it all, all alone. She took the plunge into SCBWI in 2011 and hasn't looked back. That's the um, Society for Children's Books Writers International, SCBWI. Um, now she primarily works digitally. She says mostly because she really, 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 really needs to erase <laughs> and is represented by the East West Literary Agency. East West Books is an absolutely amazing literary uh, agency that um, their books, like it says, East West, it, they're such a culturally diverse um, 
agency for children's literature it is just fascinating they used to be lee low i think and now they're east west um, her favorite book subjects are children especially girls and animals so she's done several she was born in bangkok thailand now lives in colorado with her husband and three three decades <laughs> three artistic daughters and a dog <laughs> She also enjoys fast and furious sewing projects and limited, she's not that athletic, hiking. I think I would like this person. Anyway, that's her. So that's the story I'm going to read today called One Girl. And we'll go to iPad right here. There it is. This has a very different feel in the illustrations, these delicate kind of lines. Um, but still how it covers. I love the gradient in color of this and uh, it's just beautiful. Little girl in a school uniform. Let's see where we go. Here, I'm catching up with everybody. Often writing outright by books for parents and kids I work with, but they are parent topic related. Yeah, all our grandbabies need this book. These storybooks might be more effective. A subtle approach. I'm convinced no one reads the others. Yeah, it, you know, Donna is, is, is very true. Um, it oftentimes, um, when I was teaching and as like one of the things I would do um, was sometimes when I had parent-teacher conferences and I had certain messages that were hard to deliver to a parent. I had books that would communicate that <laughs> in a way and I would have their, their child there with me and have them read the book aloud to their parent. Mm, yeah, it can be. Or, or, or the other thing I would do is have the book as a send home book for an assignment um, because we had a um, I had a puppet that would go home and had a diary, a journal that would go home with the students. And that puppet would, they would take the puppet and the journal and the book home and it would rotate through different kids. And then there, if they had the puppet that night, they were supposed to read the book and write in the journal or have mom or dad write with them who listened to the story with them, who read the story with them, who read the book, um, what did, what was the thing that you liked best, um, what, what point, what stood out to you the most type, whatever they could come up with. I had different little questions for different kind of books or they could just illustrate something about it, but the parents always had to sign off that they'd been there too. So there were oftentimes books that I would send home with a puppet and a journal and the book so that they could get read if I felt that there was, yeah, need, needed to be read in a certain setting or at home or some parent needed to hear that message and they weren't getting it any other ways. So I, that was my first subtle way that I would go before I got sledgehammer blunt. <laughs> I could do that occasionally. Um, yes. Is there a sudden? An author after my own heart. Yay. Pretty is the word that comes to mind. It reminds me of European vines and flowers and Dutch type. What a cool idea. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The puppet idea is such a good idea with a journal and the, and the, and the puppet would have had oftentimes had a pocket. Oh, it, they're just, it, if you get the, um, um, the folk mantis puppets, I know they're expensive, but they last forever. Or sometimes I, I had one, I had a, an, one that had a, a pouch and then the, the journal would stick in the, in its pouch and go back and forth. It's amazing. Okay, here we go. Let me take a sip of water and I'll get one girl red. Oops, hang on. 
for some reason, the battery power is suck and go. Like, just, whoa, going bad on all my equipment today. I'm just pulling through it. One Girl by Andrea Beattie. Illustrations by Dow Fulmerick. One Girl. And if you know how to say her last name better than I do, put it out ph phonetically. But um, it's Thai, and um, I think it's Thai. And I could, yeah, I have a friend that's from Thailand, but I haven't talked to Peter in a while. And it's hard enough to understand him when we're face to face, let alone if I ask him to tell me how something is pronounced phonetically. <laughs> One girl. One girl. Look at what's falling from the sky to her. It's a book. One spark. Faint and fading in the dark. Flicker, flicker, flicker. Glow. Tiny ember burning low. Look at the pencils that are the, like the fence posts and the benches and books and the trees that are made of pencils. One girl, one spark, glowing, glowing in the dark, burning, burning, burning fire. One girl, heart's desire, brighter, brighter, brightest bright. One girl in the light. One girl growing strong. One girl glowing shares her song. Brighter, brighter. Brightest bright, filled with wonder, hearts take flight. Words like comets through the night, blazing streaks of blinding light, seeking out the darkest dark. To bring one girl, one shining spark. Here's the author's note. She says, Everything we have ever known or might ever imagine can be held between the covers of a book. That knowledge is a precious and powerful thing. Education shares that power and helps its recipients become their most amazing selves. But what if someone is kept from an education? That is the situation for over 130 million girls around the world. Factors like poverty, political situations, remote living, violence, and child marriage keep girls out of classrooms and stop them from reaching their full potential. Global lack of education for girls hurts them, their families, their communities, and their countries. Educated girls grow into women who are healthier, earn higher incomes, and help the people in their lives out of poverty. To learn more about how you can help girls around the world get an education, visit the United Nations Girls Education in Initiative, ungei.org and donate to the Girls Opportunity Alliance at House there. But I think that this is such a cool book because the proceeds from this are one of the things that goes to that Girls Alliance. I think that's a wonderful book. It's a beautiful book. So cool. So cool. Such a beautiful book. 
Let's see what you guys said. Ah, yes. Malala Yousafzai. You, you oh, I can never say her last name, but her, there is a, a picture book about her that is just, Julie, do you remember the name of that one? That when it came out about her, um, oh my gosh, that was a kicker book. Oh, um, uh, oh yes, there is Malala's magic pencil. Oh my goodness. That, I forgot about that book. Oh, that's for another night. Because that's, that's going to have to be in and of itself. That's an amazing book too. Um, it deserves a whole talk about, well, I have, I have a couple books about amazing writers and, um, and people that have written some, there's, there's a, a book by Amanda Gorman. There's this one, Malala's Magic Pebble, Pencil. Um, oh my gosh. Yay. Thank you, Julie, for reminding me of that book, For the Right to Learn. Yes. Yes. Standing up for the right to learn. I think that is huge. Um, so tomorrow night, I have to tell you guys that the book that I'm doing tomorrow night, like kind of just fell out of my bookshelf. It is not on my iPad. It's one that I have read for years to my kids. And since they were little, it was published in 1975. And so I have a, a hard cover of it. I'm not going to show you the front of it. Um, it's an Australian or a new, uh, a, a, a author from New Zealand who's well known, but what kicked my behind when it came off the shelf, when I was looking for other things, kind of fell in my lap was who the illustrator was. Cause I've always loved the illustrations and they seemed a bit familiar, like they looked kind of like, but I couldn't quite place them until <laughs> you guys, I come looking for these and I finally look at the name of the illustrator and I'm just like, oh, what? You'll probably reckon if, if you're at all into fairyland and fantasies and different kind of things like that, you'll recognize his name tomorrow night, but this was the first book that this particular person ever illustrated. And I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm so excited because I'm, as I start looking at the book, I was seeing all these kind of like, oh my gosh. And plus I have a book of his, of other things that I'll bring and show you that is, um, he and his wife did together. I have a, a dragon book of wit by him and a, a fairy book by him. So we'll see. Yeah. Sometimes it's the universe when it hits you in the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing. So I'm excited about that. And it's, it's fun, but it's just full of amazing talent and where this one person has gone and how much that influence that I think that's the thing with like one girl that uh, it, the idea that one little bit of information can make so much difference and the domino effect that that has all around the world and what can do what, what one person's, um, efforts can do. If, if you know the book, three cups of tea, um, although it's had lots of different things, stories gone around, it's still the fact of what that did to bring books into an area um, and a school. Yeah, that's a whole nother story too. Anyway, you guys, thank you. Um, last night after painting some, after what I did um, in here, I, Bob came home and he thought, he thought my art activity was pretty cool. So, um, 
tomorrow I'm probably going to run over and get little jars of glue and get start getting ready for that because we realize that we have um, not that long till we are going to leave for Yellowstone. Um, but I already, don't worry, I already have stories in the can and some of them are already, the premieres are already set, which I guess confused, I, I, I apologize, but I was getting myself ahead of time and I already set those premieres for the days I knew for sure that I would be in Yellowstone in a place that didn't have any um, any coverage. Yeah, the Lamar Valley doesn't have any. <laughs> so the temperature when we're there on the 23rd, 24th is supposed to be like mid 60s in the middle of the day, 40 at night, 43 or something like that. Today, the road from Norris to Tower, no, Norris, Norris to Canyon, no, 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 wrong, no, wrong, from Tower to Canyon, got closed, uh, chains were required <laughs> on another part of the road because the snowstorms came in. <laughs> it's been closing, opening, closing, opening all day. <laughs> I'm like, and, but that's Yellowstone, you know, this is a place that creates its, it has its own weather pattern. Literally, it creates its own weather pattern all within Yellowstone around that caldera, you know. So, who knows what it's going to be. It's supposed to be good when we're there. But today, they're having snowstorms and chains are required. <laughs> oh, well, it's going to be fun. And I'm, I'm hoping that I will I'll be able to at least get my phone to hook up sometimes and live from there. And, and if nothing else, I'll... I'll have my camera and I'll uh, talk to a few bison and maybe a couple wolves and some other things. And maybe talk to the bears too. I'm hoping they'll come down and say hi. That would be good. And the uh, elks, the elk are calving right now. So that ought to be fun to see the babies. Anyway, you guys, um, nobody likes a tease. <laughs> Leave us hang. I... I just got the Dragon Quest book by the Sumi author. Ah, good. Oh, good, Angie. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, when are you going to Ye Yellowstone again? In a couple weeks. Um, we leave um, not the day after tomorrow, but the 21st is the day that we start out. And I have to go to Yakima first because there's a gospel press reunion. Um, it's a singing group I was in in high school and we're having a, Sonny is, our leader is, um, who was our youth director, Sonny's in his mid eighties and he's still going strong and everything. He's amazing. So, uh, they're having a, we're having a reunion. So we'll click through that. I'm not going to stay overnight to stay, to sing at church the next morning. I'm just not into that anymore. And, um, but we're going to have a practice in, at Drollinger at one in, and then Bob and I will continue to head east and probably make it to maybe to Pocatello, Idaho that night if we go that direction or unless we go up or we, it depends on which way we decide to go. And then, uh, so that'll be Saturday night and then Sunday we'll drive and go a little further, make it further in and stop a couple places along the way that we want to and then by Monday we'll be in Yellowstone um, we've got some we're, we're going to take our time because we're not we're not taking the trailer but we want to be able to this because I don't have we don't have the trailer this time I can I can actually have him go off down side roads and go turn here which he hates to do when I just out of nowhere turn here <laughs> and that's me but I've gotten some of my best photographs there. So, but there's some really beautiful places. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Relaxing. And, uh, and then on the way back, we're going to maybe go to Glacier, but uh, yeah. So it'll be a few days anyway. All right. Yeah. It'll be awesome. <laughs> Yogi bear and boo boo. Yeah. Yogi and boo boo. Not your average bear. Yogi bear and boo boo. That was one of my 
favorite, favorite cartoons as a kid. Not your average bear. It's a picnic, basketball boo. <laughs> hey, Yogi. <laughs> All right, you guys. Everybody, take care. I want to travel in art and help people cry pain and depression. One beautiful color at a time. I can't remember the time of year to see the firefalls there. Uh, that's it. In um, The firefalls is at Yosemite. I'm going to Yellowstone. Um, that's that's um, the, um, the, um, the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. They, uh, in, in Yellowstone, they call it the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, which is this amazing, amazing canyon is like very much like the grand canyon has a falls that um by now should be thawed during the middle of winter it freezes and it's pretty amazing to see that it's it's oh, i've seen some of those waterfalls frozen in the middle of winter in in yellowstone it's unbelievable to see this giant waterfall frozen solid and yeah and but uh, Yellowstone Falls is, is probably open up, up again but Fire Falls is in Yosemite which I think that is in March I'm not sure it's kind of on my list to go see it sometime yeah tent camp nope no, we're not going to tent camp this we're we're staying um we are actually going to stay in different a couple hotels along the way just to be able but when we are in Yellowstone I mean not in Yellowstone in yeah in Yellowstone we are staying at the um, Lamar Buffalo Ranch which is the in the um, in Yellowstone it's the research center for Yellowstone forever it's out in the Lamar Valley and since we're going on a on a field expedition with Yellowstone forever their their nonprofit educational group we get to stay there and the naturalists will take us out and it, everything i'll i'll be i'll tell you guys I'll, I'll video and show you guys all about it i'm so excited can you tell i'm just a babbling fool i'm all excited about this bob has been talking about nothing but what food to figure out how to pack because we are out and we have to have like freeze dried stuff and then we don't have um electricity in where we're, we're staying um, but there is a cookhouse that we use group together but you have to pack in your own it's 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 yeah it's a little bit basics fortunately we're pretty used to and have a lot of access to the stuff that you know you can take with you but um, it's still some you know packing it in I'm only taking um two lenses my one to 500 and then i'm taking my 24 105 so i'll cover everything else i'm not going to really worry about really wide angles and i'll take my doubler so if i can the 500 can go up to a thousand millimeters if i need to I have my tripod but we also have to be able to pack in extra clothes and all our food in our backpacks for the hike every day so and we leave before dawn in the morning and dawn is at 5 20 in the morning so we have to we're out on the road well before dawn <clears throat> it'll it'll be an adventure yeah it'll be an adventure i'm excited but anyway so that's the thing that's, yeah i get them i always get i haven't been to yosemite since um college and bob has never been we were planning to go one time and had it all um, you know reserved and everything but then the road washed out and it was a three hour detour around just to get where we were and half the roads were closed then anyway so we ended up going to death valley instead i like tent camping too yeah it's it's fun but um not when I want to have a place to get to. And then on the way back, if we can't get into, you know, chances of getting into Glacier National Park on Memorial Day weekend, because we're going to be gone so long, are iffy. We'll see how it, 
how it is. If we're there, if we leave uh, right from Yellowstone and drive straight to Gla Glacier on Thursday, we should be able to just do a scouting. But, you know, Glacier's pretty amazing too. I, it's, it's, national parks are not something that you can do in a day. They, you, you just, you can't. They're, it's too much. All right, you guys, I'm going to stop yammering and um, let you guys go. And um, I will see you tomorrow night for some fairly fabulous fun <laughs> and frolicsome fairy <laughs> So, yep, that's already there. So the crackle of the fire. So can't we? Oh, yeah. Yellowstone. <laughs> the first time I was there and we were going, we had my parents, I, I this is, I'll just tell this last, we were, we were driving from Gardner and we were driving up to Mammoth Hot Springs um, and we were coming up, there's a road that kind of come up the hill and we had my parent, my, my mom's old Buick, she'd given it to me when she decided dad couldn't drive anymore and she handed me the keys and said, your father couldn't feel the gas pedal the other day so the key here's the keys anyway so we took that on that trip this was in 2014 and we're coming up the hill toward mammoth hot springs hotel and <laughs> walking down the side of the road next to us is this line of like six bison and i rolled down the window and i have a picture of me taking a picture of this line of bison and you can see me taking a picture in the rear view mirror on the side and they just practically brush by the car but it was fairly early morning and it was like they were heading to get their lattes they were not getting they were just like walking i'm like they were heading for the going for coffee <laughs> And I was just cracking up because they were so funny. They were just perfectly, and it was like they were right heading, right down their side of the road, heading off to work. Got to stop and get my latte first. <laughs> that was my imagination for what they were in there. They're just, they're stunning animals, but yeah. A little black beetle. A glamper. <laughs> well, I used to be my, and when, when we had a, 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 an RV a long time ago, um, a C-Class. <laughs> my girlfriend gave me a bumper sticker that I put over the inside of the door that said, my idea of camping is when room service is late. <laughs> and that was, I kind of used to be that, but I'm not that way anymore. Now I'm just like, yeah, let me out there, drive those tent, tent stakes and have some fun and let me go hike and <laughs> when it's harder for me to do now, but I still try. All right, you guys, take care, okay? Thanks so much for being here, for all this wonderful stuff, and I will see you tomorrow, I hope, and until next time, let's dance this party out and keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. Just look at all the names in this crowd, and that's where the first place you'll find it. We could get lost in all the lies and sounds Feel the right We won't go home We will just stay here downtown There's not just us on the boulevard There in the light in your eyes Oh, we don't need no black We could be shameless, famous, running cool With the love that leaves us weightless, ooh Drop it, gorgeous, wow, ooh You got me feeling starstruck too We could be famous, <laughs>
Thank you, Angie. Mason fan club. Yes, Larry, exactly. Night, everybody. You guys take care.